Uh, nice to see you all here in the home of the .rs domain. I'm Artyoms, I work for ADB, and uh, this is when I'm actually trying to speed through the rest of the slides off because it's really cool. I'm gonna show you this video. Um, so I'm gonna talk about is um, this, like the analytics product that we're making at EDB is built in data fusion. And it's like one of the optimizations we built for it, which is pretty cool. Um, so EDB is not like an analytics company, right? So we are like a PG company. We have a bunch of Postgres maintainers, core contributors. And so what is EDB doing data fusion? Um, it started basically like in 2022. So me, Miles, and Marco, we were working on a startup called Splitgraph. We were doing a bunch of like Postgres analytics data platform -y shape stuff. And um, eventually, like in 2022, we built CFAL. So this is like um, one of the diagrams I kind of pulled out of the old slides. Um, I think the production value of these is gonna go way down. Like the next one is gonna be an Excalibur draw. But um, CFAL wasn't built in 2022. It's like, um, I don't know, it's like a hybrid of Postgres and um, Varnish. So if you have some um, web application and you want to use like, you want to like an API to run SQL, uh, like from the client side. Um, so this is what CFAL could do. So you can like deploy it on um, like Fly or Google Cloud Run, and then you can put a cache in front of it and you can like send SQL to it. And it like sort of works like CDN for analytics. And um, yeah, so we use Data Fusion. That was like our first interaction with Data Fusion. And then in uh, 2023, we got acquired by EDB. And so the thing we're building at EDB is like HDAP. So hybrid transactional analytical processing. The whole idea is that we take Postgres and um, we replicate data from PG to like an analytical system. So uh, in this case, like C file. And uh, so we replicate changes. We store them in uh, object storage as like Delta tables and like house format. And then um, that's like on the right side. And on the read side, uh, C file, like really data fusion handles all the query acceleration. So if a query comes in and uh, it looks like an analytics query, what we can do is uh, take and just send direct to C file. Um, so this uses this so-called lake house format. Um, you probably know these, right? There's Delta, there's like Iceberg and there's Hootie. But what that is is really like a bunch of parquet files and some metadata to track them. Um, so like, you know, you have this Delta log, for example, here. Um, and really what you do, um, like really how these lake house formats started is, um, well, we realized, we realized like if we have stuff in the object storage, we can't like edit these parquet files. And if you have like a bunch of writers that are doing something with it, you need some sort of like a, um, like a transactional system like guarantees on top of that. So like if something crashes, it doesn't leave your um, like object storage in an inconsistent state. So, um, um, so when you're like reading through the Delta table, essentially on this slide, I have um, like a data vision query plan. And so, you know, you have your Delta table you have your like data fusion table provider. What happens here is um, data fusion goes to this Delta library and says like, hey, I want to plan a query. Uh, Delta library goes to like the Delta log and says, okay, um, I need to like read these files because they're um, in the transaction log and I, um, I know that I need them. Uh, so you do that. And then after that, it like replaces it with a scan through a bunch of like parquet files. And that's like the, I don't think I can show this because this, Things are strong enough, but um, we have a, like a parquet file read, and this is backed by this thing called the object store. So that's like another abstraction data fusion. Uh, the thing there is like it supports. It's like an abstraction over you know GCP or like S3 or Azure. So um, all like the parquet reader, all that it knows to do is um, like do you know get request, get range request. So it says like give me this um, file, give me this byte offset of a file, and then you know below that. We can, like the actual object store implementation sends it to like, what do you want, right? Minio, S3, Azure. Um, so, what's the problem with that? Um, well, if you want to read a parquet file, um, they're kind of optimized for analytical queries. And the thing you do first is like, you go to the very end of the file, you read the footer. So you make a request, you say like, give me um, the last like, you know, um, several bytes to find the footer length and then give me the actual footer. And then given the filters that I have, uh, what I can do is um, like take the, let's call them, take the row groups, right? So um, I look at the row groups, uh, like row groups index in the footer. I say like, I need to read this thing, this thing, and this thing. And then I actually go and do the get range requests 
like in the actual file, sort of very surgical. Um, so the problem with that is uh, this can happen like multiple times. So you can have um, like some cases where uh, you're running like the same query twice, so you want to download the same file. You have cases where like you're downloading lots of tiny, tiny um, like segments of a file. And um, basically the problem with that is latency, right? So if you have an object store that's like somewhere far apart from the network, um, like, you know, it takes like 50 milliseconds to query S3, like 15 to 30 milliseconds. And that like adds up pretty quickly. Um, even if you're like in the same region, um, if you're across regions, like you pay money to move, mo to move data, uh, you pay like money for bandwidth. And so it like makes sense to try and minimize that. So what we built in C file and like what made into our product um, is this wrapper on the object store. So basically it like also implements the object store like API interface. And what it does is um, kind of can, um, like when you request some data, we can go into the on disk cache, we download the data, it's not there, and then um, we can go and like save it there for later. Okay, so I'm gonna spend a lot of time on this slide. I'm not sure how we're doing on time actually. All right, awesome, like 10 minutes awesome? Can we do 50? <laughs> nah, it's like five or something. Nice, all right, cool. Um, so, so let's say Data Fusion gives, like, comes to us and says, okay, give me like five kilobytes, you know, zero to five kilobytes. The first thing you do is like we completely ignore it, and instead we download like more data. So like conceptually, you know, because if it takes like 15 milliseconds to get one kilobyte and like 20 milliseconds to download one megabyte, you might as well just download like one megabyte. So conceptually, we split each parquet file into like chunks of say one megabyte, and that's kind of like experimentally found that that's the best one. Um, so we split each file into chunks, um, and then we say, okay, we gotta like download chunk number one of this file. So we go there, we go into the like cache core. So we use this library called Mocha for caching, and that's the thing that handles like all the complex stuff, so like concurrency, evictions, like maintaining a certain cache size, the LRU, all that sort of stuff. So inside of Mocha, we go there, and we say like, do you have this thing in the cache? It probably says no. Uh, so we go and download it. This is the point at which we actually go to the object store, like the underlying S3 or Azure or GCP. Uh, we get that, you know, that one chunk. If you, like if Data Fusion requests a bunch of data at the same time, we sort of like recoalize them at that point. So if it says like, come on, five megabytes, we just send like one to five meg requests. After that, we stash it in the cache. So what we used to do is um, like wait and write this chunk to disk. But obviously that's slow because, you know, that's IO. And, you know, while you're waiting on IO, you could be like doing compute. So right now what we do is we put it like in memory and then we start like a Tokyo task to flush it to disk um, in the background. We give it back to Data Fusion, right? We slice it out. We say like, here's your five kilobytes. And then Data Fusion can like keep doing whatever it wants. And then um, second go around, you know, something comes, some request comes that here's the same chunk. We can say, okay, it's, um, it's in the cache. It's like in memory or if it's on disk, we read from, we read from disk and um, return it back. And then the eviction process is like, Mocha has this thing called an eviction listener. So what we can do is um, you can say like, when you evict this thing from disk, call this function. So when you evict this thing from cache, you can call this function. And then um, like we just say, okay, we delete this file from disk. Um, benchmarks. So this is like a bit of a synthetic setup. Um, I have a Minio uh, with like a three gig data set here. I have a proxy that injects latency have C in front of that. And I have like our PG product, um, which like in this case doesn't do anything, right? Just sends queries to C file. But we have like all the infrastructure for benchmark at Postgres, so we just use that. Um, and the results are, it's like sort of good actually. So um, even if you like have like a 128 meg cache here, which is um, like 5% of the data set size, you get like a nice 10% improvement here. Um, one thing to note is that like these are all run sequentially. So, you know, like TPCH2, for example, benefits from like the caching from TPCH1. But you can see like a consistent improvement in all queries, apart from like 18 for some reason. And uh, we can look at this as well. So this is um, um, so the aggregation, right? How much it takes in total. So we get like 10% improvement in speed um, in this like synthetic thing. All right, um, demo. It's not actually a demo, it's a video, um, but the thing, like, the thing I did here was I ran TPCH query six, is like selecting from the line item table, does some a bunch of filters, and, um, and then I like made uh, 
this instrumenting layer for C file, which dumps all like requests and responses to the cache. Um, so you can see sort of how it progresses, how it downloads the actual data. And um, there's three buttons here. The top button is supposed to start the video. All right, so this is um, this is like slowed down 300 times. And the thing you can see here is, um, so like the first thing we see here is that um, delta partition pruning makes sure that, is it, is it, I think, right? Uh, no cursor. So third row, uh, second, third, and sorry, first, second, third file. Uh, you can see the cursor? Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, so these files, right? Um, we can see here is like data fusion first request the footer, but it only reads the footer like of these four files. That's because Delta Lake does partition pruning. So because of these filters, like we know we don't need to touch parquet files at all, like the other ones. They do that. Um, these like red lines mean there's like a request in progress. And then we just let it run. And like a 300x slowdown. And very soon, we're gonna see like actual requests being made. So, so green means download it. And then you can see like data fusion requests to individual row groups which are slowly getting like populated. Um, I guess one thing to show here is that, like it's not obviously, it's obviously not reading the whole file, right? It's reading like individual row groups that are um, related to the query. So like for example, um, here right view, you'll see it did not load anything. Um, so that's like demo number one, I guess. And here's where it goes wrong. Um, so here, um, this is like a thing we found, uh, like a bug in our data set. Um, uh, so with this like a sample data set we have, which is also DPCH10, but the line item table is not sorted. And so what happens here is like we're downloading the entire thing. And you can see here kind of like it, pr it going through the uh, like through all files. And you can see like, you can also see like cache evictions, right? So um, behind there, you see sort of data, the green data slowly going away. Um, that's about it actually. And then um, I think yeah, there's nothing else here. Cool. And then um, I can stop the video, hopefully. Yeah. All right, well, it's okay. I don't think it's time, but um, we can do, yeah? Okay, well, I can take questions, sure. Speed run. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's, it's not open source. Like, you know, you can download it from like this QR code or this link. Um, and it's like eventually, it can be like separate crates. So it's like a single module that implements the object store. Uh, eventually, like you break it out, I guess, and um, yeah. Um, cool. Well, if you have any questions, you can um, find me in the bar, I guess. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>